Welcome to lesson 17 of a friendly introduction to abstract algebra. In the next few lessons we are going to learn one of the most fundamental basic concepts of abstract algebra and this is taking a substructure, in our case a subgroup of a group, and taking the quotient by this substructure and if we are lucky, this quotient has the same algebraic structure as the thing we started with, in this case, a group. And I hope it will become clear in the next few lessons why this is important and how that actually works. So as a prerequisite for the next lessons, you absolutely need to have a firm grasp of the concept of equivalence relation partition of a set and the factor set. So please refer to lesson 6, I think. Okay, we start with the following observation, namely that factor sets need not be groups. So let's have a quick a reminder of the things we already learned. As always, G is a group, H is a subgroup of this group G, and we define the following relation on G. We say X is equivalent to Y with respect to the subgroup H, if and only if X inverse Y lies in H. We already showed that this defines indeed an equivalence relation on the group G, and that the equivalence classes are of the following form. They are exactly the left H cosets, meaning they look like this. G capital H, meaning we take all the products of this G here with all the elements of H. And this set here is exactly the equivalence class of this equivalence relation. Then we can take the factor set or the quotient of this set here by this equivalence relation, which in a group theoretic context uh, is denoted by G mod H or G modulo H. We could also have written G modulo tilde. And this is simply the set of all equivalence classes, in this case of all left cosets. So this could be written like that. We take all the left H cosets and put them in a bag. And then here, of course, if H is not the trivial subgroup uh, consisting only of the identity, in this collection here will be a lot of subsets that are equal, but this gets swallowed by the set notation. So remember this set here, H, H. For example, is the same as the set consisting only of H. So by definition of a set, there are no double entries in, in this set notation here. A more convenient way to write this is we take a complete representative system of these H cosets denoted here, G sub I, I running through some index set capital I. In this way, we avoid any ambiguity. Remember? Since these equivalence classes uh, form a partition of the group, the group can be written like this as a disjoint union of some left cosets and they are indexed by a set capital I and all the representatives that yield such a partition of the group G, them I call a complete representative system. Of course, this does not belong here in the definition. Now back in lesson six, I messed up the definition or was a bit in incomplete, the definition of a partition. And uh, the viewer Tobit4517, thanks a lot again, um, pointed that out. And on my webpage, um, you can find the link in the de description. There is a correction and a complete definition of what a partition and this index set should be. So please refer to that if you want to know any more details. In all the examples that we are going to treat, this is always a finite set. So there really isn't any problem with this index set here because it is finite as well. And this here is just a convenient way for me to list all the different cosets. So 
Again, this here is a bit problematic because I did not clearly specify this index set here. But as I just said, for convenience, I take this notation rather than this here. And for any more details about partitions and equivalence relations, please see the PDF file on my web page. All right, so this probably created more confusion than necessary. I apologize. Let's take a look at a well-known example. As a group, we take the integers and as a subgroup, we take n times the integers, n being any natural number. To avoid the trivial case, we start with two. And to get even more con concrete, we consider here the case n equals five. So if you haven't watched the videos on equivalence relations before, this might be a bit difficult to follow. So do not despair, but go back and watch the video where we took a closer look at this example here. Now, this equivalence relation here, because we write the composition here additively, we have addition on the integers, becomes minus x plus y is an element of this here. And we denote the left cosets not with g times h, but with g plus h. So do not get confused. This here is exactly the same, only in a slightly different notation. So what happens? The equivalence classes are the well-known residue classes of calculating or doing modulo 5 calculations in the integers. And they form a partition of our whole group. So for example, we take zero. The next number that is equivalent to zero would be five because five minus zero is divisible by five, hence lies in this subgroup here, five Z. The next element that is equivalent to zero would be 10 because 10 minus zero is 10, which is divisible by five and so on. And the same in the other direction, minus five, um, is equivalent to zero. So this here would be one equivalence class or left coset of zero by this subgroup H. The next coset that is different from this one here contains the element one and six and 11 and minus four and minus nine and so on in both directions. Then the next coset um, contains the 2 and 7 and 12 and so on, then 3, 8, 13 and in the negative direction and then 4, 9, 14 and so on. And the next coset containing 5 is already the first coset we started with. These here are five different cosets that form a partition of the integers. So a complete representative system of these cosets would be the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you see, there's no need to make an overcomplicated definition. Simply think of these five numbers as a complete representative system. I might as well have taken 5, 6, minus 3, minus 7, minus 6, for example, it doesn't matter. I always end up with the same number of elements. And this can be shown to be generally true, which we won't concern ourselves, uh, ourselves with here. So now comes the important step. We transition to the factor set, meaning we collapse this whole first coset into one single element of this new set, of this quotient or factor set. And this here is simply the residue class of zero. And for ease of notation, I write it as zero bar, as we have done many times before. This whole set gets collapsed to the next element of this quotient here, the residue class of one, or the left coset of one with respect to the subgroup 5z, and so on. So I end up by collapsing all these disjoint sets to new elements of this new set here, which is called G mod H or Z mod 5 Z. And this can be done for any subgroup. Any subgroup affords an equivalence relation on a group by this definition. And for any subgroup, I can build this new factor set or quotient set. 
Now in this case, it is even more than a mere set because we already know that here, this can be given the structure of a group simply by doing the following. I take one residue class and add it with a, another residue class by simply taking the representatives, K and L in this case, adding them and then taking the residue class or left coset with respect to H. And we already showed that this here is well defined and gives us the structure of an abelian group on this set here. And that this here better fits with our previous notation and the notation in the next example. I call these representatives here G sub I and G sub J. So by simply adding the representatives, I end up with a well-defined addition that gives me the structure of an abelian group. This, however, does not work for any subgroup as the next example is going to show.